Welcome to another episode of Our Niche with yours truly, Colleen Diedrich. Today, the world is celebrating Mother's Day. And um, I want to look at the flip side. Uh, on the normal circumstances, yes, today is a day that we are highlighting how amazing our mothers have been, the different things that they continue to do to elevate us as a nation, to elevate us as individuals. However, I find in my practice that there is another side to motherhood that we dare not speak about, primarily because we have venerated the role of motherhood. So we dare not say anything that could be perceived as, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? That could be perceived as what now? Any kind of negative, actually. Any kind of negative, yeah? So I want to dare to tread somewhere that I feel needs to be highlighted primarily because so many of us suffer in silence due to the things that we would have been exposed to, due to the conversations that we would have had, due to the conversations we didn't have with our moms. Exploring this with me is none other than good, good friend, relationship specialist, conflict specialist, Lord, her list of accolades go on and on and on. None other than da -da 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 <laughs> real raw speaking. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> Mrs. Daniel Sinclair. <laughs> Daniel, sorry, Stuart. Sinclair. I know, my tongue went. <laughs> All of that build up. Now, I, I wanted you to come and have this conversation with me because of the different things that I wanted to look at as it pertains to mom and I feel as though um, you are the best person to kind of keep it real yeah <laughs> to unpack all of this stuff with me now I recognize in my coaching practice that lots and lots of people come struggling with self-defeating behaviors that they got as a result of their interaction with their moms or lack of interaction with their moms. Just the things that mothers would have said to them that um, resulted in low self-esteem, in low body image or negative body image, yeah, unhealthy body image, right? Outside of that, there was the slut shaming. We talked about slut shaming on Unleashed, you know, a couple episodes prior, but I don't know that any of us have actually linked slut shaming to our to our moms. But it's something that I realize happened a lot in our society in Jamaica. Some things that moms will say just off the top of their mouth, trying to curtail the action of their children, their girl children, especially as their bodies <coughs> start to to change. The things that you tell them you know what I mean the, the breasts start to come in the bodies start mm -hmm. to shape out and then all of a sudden is man them a look and yeah. I mean the conversation can get absolutely ridiculous so I want to start there I want to start there um, I remember we were having a conversation some time ago about a similar situation that you experienced yeah you know it's funny that we're talking about it and we're talking about it in the context of, of mothers and daughters and mm -hmm. slut shaming. But as we're talking about it, I, you know, my thing is I always have to introspect. Mm -hmm. And I have boys, and my latest struggle with my son has been oh my God, my son talks a whole lot. And I've been, I notice every once in a while I tell him, just shut up now. And, and every time I start to say, just shut up now, I try to stop before. I reach the point of you chat too, too much, much. Mm -hmm. or you chat like a gal or you, yes. you understand mm -hmm. because I know I, I think I've done enough work now to know what that can result in um, either he did this new thing on the weekend where I think we were all just tired of him and he just went in a closet oh dear we're in another house and he went into the closet of this house that is not his house and locked the door and sat in the corner um, and I was having a headache and so everybody was telling him don't go to mommy or whatever But he came and he was trying to open the door and then I couldn't hear him and then everybody was calling calling him and nobody no answer And so he went to, I went outside looking for him. I went in the room I didn't see him and I said I opened the closet door and realized he was in there crying So I had to take him out Carry him into the bed with me. That time I had done me, you know, I take him out of the room carry him into the bed with me and sit down and I've, he's four and we've reached the point now where we have to be having a conversation. So he might have to ask him what's wrong and then sit down and allow him to articulate in his own little way 
why when daddy showed at him he was upset mm. or what was hurtful about it or whatever so that me and my husband can work it out now in the night mm-hmm. um especially because he's so mature and so, so verbose we often think of him as much older and more mature than mm, he is mm-hmm. and so we put a whole heap on him and, and in our own little way no matter how much i walk and talk about parentification we parentify him to an extent when it comes on to the baby mm-hmm. and then when he's shouting at the baby blah blah blah, blah or hitting the baby we yell at him mm-hmm. so i <laughs> It's just funny that as we talk the about this, I I actively try in my own mothering to not repeat the mistakes I've seen or not repeat some of the things that I've endured. And even though I have boy children, so my experience was different and I did experience the slut shaming. Um, what I'm trying to do is not emulate the way my mother talked to us. So the, the the name calling, whether it's not shaming or not, mm-hmm. I'm I'm trying to stay away from the name calling. I'm also trying to stay away from the children must be seen and not and heard, not heard right. type of thing because I'm growing boys and that's a little bit different from growing girls because me I try to grow black kings. Mm-hmm. You understand? I want them to talk. I want them to some little mark of gab. So I can't tell him right. little man to keep by out every minute. Right. Mm-hmm. Every then he's gonna go hide in the closet, but the 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 name calling because sometimes we talk about the slut shaming a lot but it it's not just the slut shaming the name calling in 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 general mm-hmm. does have a big part to play in how children see themselves absolutely so obviously when i talk about this topic yeah i talk about you know now that i'm a mother but they just turn mother away there yeah <laughs> you understand mm-hmm. I, most of the time i would have been talking about it as a as a child as, mm-hmm. as a recipient of that and uh, the name calling we do it in so many different ways in jamaica mm-hmm. um so you have the mothers who talk about yeah. the picnic black, black like the big nose yeah 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 Are the, the things like them just like them father you're still uh, the, that part there you still like no you forget something sweetheart you still like your walkless Walk, pooper especially for those single moms but that is usually in the case of the boys mm-hmm. what i found in my in my own experience, experience mm-hmm. being a girl now is it wouldn't be my walkless pooper because my mother never had that to say but it would be either some other adjective or she if she couldn't find some other thing to attribute to my father she would attribute it to my father's family mm-hmm. so any wrongdoings my father family them in a mm-hmm. all of yeah, a sudden are you, you that yeah that is you are your father that in a yo yeah mm-hmm. um and so i say this to say truth be told i've, I've now at 36 come to the place where I, I have i think i've reached a nice place with my mother of understanding i've done a lot of work to get to that to space. get to that <laughs> Oh, I have done a lot of work <laughs> to get to the place that I understand that my mother did the best she, she could, could do with, mm-hmm, with the with tools she that had. she had. Right. Um, with not having her own mother from, I think my mother's mother died when she was eight. Right. Her father died when she was 16. Mm-hmm. And then after that, she was carted from one household to the, to the next, other. Right. You understand? She mm-hmm. didn't know how to be nobody's mother. And then she had her siblings looking after walking behind so even the other day i was telling somebody my mother hates to cook and when i asked her why she hated to cook because she cooks well mm-hmm. she said because she cooked from she or i their knee mm-hmm. that's a thing i hear it talk about all the time she's always been looking after people she ain't trying to mm-hmm. trying to do that anymore do that. you understand so when i was little and trying to explore the kitchen and whatever mommy come and teach me to cook she wasn't she wasn't about that life because she, she never was over had, it. Was not, and that was also not her experience. She never had no mother in no kitchen with mm-hmm, her. Mm-hmm. And that is a thing that I think as black people, we tend to forget. And it's a thing that even with my husband, I'm trying to remember. The things that I want him to be, the romantic, the this, that, the blah, blah, all of these things. He never had those that examples. Wasn't, that right, wasn't that his wasn't growing his reality. up. Why am I trying to put that on him? And I think I reach a space in my mother now where I'm trying to recognize that, well, shit yeah who taught her how to be a mother you see but the, the thing is this here here is the deal right you get to a place because a lot of us rationalize the, the hurtful things that our mom say to us and so on the hurtful things that she does we rationalize it we get to the space where we realize that boy jano still wish pa, in a freedom era them, them you know they weren't particularly expressive right they grew up with parents who were 
completely and totally lost for the most part, especially as it pertains to the emotional aspects of rearing a child, right? So we rationalize it. And we say we forgive them, we understand why it is that they had to behave the way that they did, the different things that they said, but in that, we forget a very important it's aspect of the process. Exactly. We're not talk about the fact that it still hurt. And most of us dare not approach mama and say, boy mama, when you used to cuss me and tell me how I did black, you know? When you used to tell, cuss me and tell me, say, a man may I look at at social girl almighty, man may have come my mind. It impacted me in this particular way. When you tell me, say, a sex may I go look, oh, or me a sex, because that I have heard I so many right times. You are, your body reach certain age, period start. You are sex in a girl. And if you breed, come in at this house, say, you're going to see what... When you told me those things, how it felt, how it felt, and by extension, the sequence of events that, that followed, that followed, and, that and followed. That's actually what I mean when I say I did a lot of work. So when people say they do a lot of work, they do a lot of work in trying to investigate where the feelings are coming from. They don't do the, the rest of it, which is the stuff that I've done. And I think, no, I've gone to the place where I've, I've confronted my mother about a lot of things. And I think I went from one extreme to the other. So I was over here not knowing and hating and then i got over here where as you say say me don't get ready short. number that come talk to me about Ray because Exa you, you get defensive and da, 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 right. and blah 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 right and, and i think no so last week i had up this picture on my whatsapp and my mother called me to say when did you take that picture i said you know when the book ship was here me and my sister take the picture or whatever and she's like yo i'm looking on the picture and i'm wondering to myself if you know how beautiful you are and I'd, I'd quickly did a thing like this. Because I remember when my mother did tell me, say, I am not beautiful. Oh, Lord. You understand? Mm -hmm. And I, I've called her out on it before. It's not a secret. Right. When I was coming here, I was trying to gear my mind up between. What are you going to say? What are you going to say? Not for now her. That you, oh, okay. Not for, not for um, me, I mean. But, but for, for her. Because she, part of it is her story, you know. Right. So how much of her shit am I willing to Put steal? Because it's mm -hmm. still her story. Right. But um, I've called her out on this thing before where when I was growing up, she used to say to me, I'm not beautiful. I'm not traditional pretty. Like how my sister is traditional. Come my sister have like nose bridge and okay. them something there. Oh, Lord. And so I wasn't the traditional <laughs> pretty. And I didn't know if that had to do with stuff with my dad or whatever. But uh, growing up, I never thought of myself as a pretty girl. She always said to me, though, you are attractive. Mm -hmm. You are attractive. And you never have to worry about getting a man because all of them will want to fuck you. Mm -hmm. And I didn't Whoa. know at that time, in, in, in her own way, what she was trying to say to me when I looked back, because I've had other people say that to me, is that you have a whole heap of sexual energy mm -hmm. and a whole heap of sex appeal. Right. So people are going to naturally be drawn to you. It is now that I look back, that I realize that that was some shit that she, because my mother body plays in her brother. Mm -hmm. And she have the traditional pretty. Right. And the ear long dung and the, you understand? Mm -hmm. She's fierce as fuck. Mm -hmm. So I know that that was something that she had also struggled with and did not know how to translate that from, from mm -hmm. adult now, I'm the adult, young child who is coming up, let me tell you, waga reach you. Right. Because... Whatever self-loathing she was going through for whatever that caused her. Mm -hmm. She hadn't told me any aspects of her story. She didn't tell me nobody attacked her. She didn't tell me she didn't get raped. She didn't tell me Nothing. none of them something there. Right. So whatever negative attention that sexual brought. energy brought upon her, right. she just had walk around with it and, and, and internalize it and have this self-loathing, which she then plastered. On you. On me. Right. Now, my sister has a traditional pretty, mm -hmm. but her energy is completely different. Right. You understand? More and reserved. so, mm -hmm. I, I don't know if it was too much of me in her, because my mother have a whole heap of sexual energy, and so does my father. Mm -hmm. So I don't know if it's that she was looking on and seeing and whatever, but I got a lot of that. So um, I went from a place of holding that and feeling in myself like, well, I'm not pretty, so whatever. And then went to a place of, well, I'm a bitch, but I'm a mother. Well, I'm not really business what you want to say because you're done telling me I'm not pretty already. Mm -hmm. To the space now where last week she's calling me to ask me if I know how beautiful I am. And now I can look at the phone and just smile and say, all right, thanks. 
and I'm not angry and I'm not resentful. I'm mm -hmm. not in the place where I was before. But even with that whole conversation around the, the, the my um, sexual essence, for right. want of a better term, mm -hmm. it was always like such a big deal. It always felt like so whenever things happen to me with men, mm -hmm. some whatever exchange it was because I've been held down, molested, all kind of variation of sexual advances assault. mm -hmm. and assaults. Right. Um, and she always, it always came over to me when I went to her, not as my mother, the protector, who would chop up people like the woman, me know where me know say we broke back bull last so. and up, bull buck and never, up Every time I came to her, one of those things, it was never bull buck and up a conqueror that rose up. It right. was always a Somehow, this is a version of it being your fault because you as, just too sexual yeah, and man just it's, can't it's, help it's themselves. All, it's all you. You need for TM. And so when I when what I learned at a very early age, which is something I often talk about, is that I may not be pretty, but everybody will want to fuck me. All right, that's a that's a that's thing. a thing. That's, that's a, a thing. thing. Thanks. Whoa. So you tell me a message and you tell me uh. the wrong way. And no, no, I know I'm gonna fuck them all up. <laughs> Everybody wants to get into my pants when I'm you can bug my face all you want. Yeah? No. All I wanna want me. And it became and so in my youth, in my youth I became very predatory. predatory. I was just about to say that. Right. Very predatory. So to eat to know, even know, and I'm really glad that this is something that when my husband met me, he recognized about me and he accepted. I am very predatory, even now. I just pick them at tea. I see you. They reach 10 or so. Whoa, that's yeah. sticky. Whoa. But I became very, very predatory because I knew, and, and, and my mother is also a master manipulator, so I learned how to, those things along the way. And I right. knew how to position myself in order to get the things that I wanted from a man. Mm -hmm. Because I, your mother you don't say that to you. That's it. Period. I don't care who you are. You could be PhD. You could live in a trench town. You're warmy. <laughs> you could pray for men. And you still, you still, you still are going to warm. You're still are going to warm. Yeah, but you see, this is the thing, though. That's, that's what I'm talking about. You see, most people never unpack this thing. Everything that you just that's said. Hard. Until they never unpack it, that's what I'm saying. Until, and they never link their behaviors to it until them hit up, them have a head on collision with themselves. I remember having a, um, a client, and she used to say to me that her mom used to preach in her head, say she a whore. She knows that she a whore down the place. She a give her the pum pum right, left and center, the whole avenue. And she said at this point, she had never even seen a penis, let alone have one enter her. And she said she, one day she just decided, okay. May I get beaten? May I get traced out? And all because she was very buxom. And there was this stupid conversation that if you're titty too big, man, I feel you up. Oh, yeah, man, I, I feel that. you up. You understand what I mean? And it's, this is the only explanation as to why she said her mom went as far as to insert, Carry to the doctor. Oh. take her finger and insert to check to see if she was still a virgin. Yes, I know. And she said that was when she decided, okay, all right. I've had enough of this foolishness. It is time to go find out what is this sex thing the man accused me of. That was exactly what why is I lost this sex thing. And but that's what I'm saying. Parents, moms don't recognize how these words impact them. You see, until you talk about the things, how you internalize what it is that she's saying. This whole idea is that all right, fine. I might not be. We say whenever you say it, like a while, it, it lit me. You're not pretty. You're not beautiful, but man will want you. You're attractive. You know, You're attractive you enough, so man, yeah, you have a team. You're sexy, man, I'm going to want you. Whenever it is that this is the message that you're telling your daughter, how else do you expect her to respond? It goes even further than <laughs> that, you know, because even now, mm -hmm. like when I do this like today, my son loves, well, both of my kids apparently, the, the, the light, baby the, the, come and he's touch like, the lips, and right. all of that. And, and the, the truth is that, um, it goes even further because when my husband come in the house and see me and say, look, Niall, mommy looks so pretty. And I'm just like, yeah, whatever. That not kind of, you don't, you don't, it not, it, it not sink. That compliment not gone away. It not say, and, oh my goodness. But me no say, the body start out later, you're going to want a piece. Right. But the part about this. Deflect. It don't land, it don't, it don't no impact way. you any. And my kid is telling me, mommy, you're so pretty. You're the prettiest mommy in the world. And I'm like, yeah, okay. Nowhere. Yeah, but that's what I'm saying. I don't know that moms 
who talk to their daughters in this particular way understand that it don't stop. When you tell the pit and them set up, you see how the nose bridge something that we are talk about? Listen to me, you used to hear my granny talk about something that you tell if put, Trace, put pin, <laughs> put pin <laughs> to see if you can get the nose sure straight. Sure a white man. Fig, 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 so the picnic them. So the picnic them knows we're straight and so forth. Listen to me, I heard those things over and over. Anything black, not too good. So for the daughter who is too black, she have problems and she certainly need to secure herself a white man. And so a lot of the body image issues, this whole idea that unless you look closer to the Eurocentric idea of what is beautiful, then not now go and fail. A lot of that was bred in the home. A lot of that was bred in the home and I'm saying, you see how you talk about how, um, you know, just the, the weight of your mom's words and how them something that did land upon you and your actions as a result of very few and even getting to the space that you can have the conversation with your mom. Very few of us do. I remember having a client who tell me, said she go out a gate for go talk to a youth to ask her for graph paper. And by the time she come in, by the time she come in, I thump up and lick down a, a set up. Them a set up for go sex. She reaching. Set up for go sex, and I'm like, I'm flabbergasted. You know what I mean? And nobody has these conversations. Nobody talk about how these things impacted and shaped the lives of the women we now see today. How them something you land on them, including this whole idea, as I said about the slut shaming. And where, where you put, how you force the children into early sexual activity, all because of this thing that you're telling them that they're doing. Yeah, because when I lost my virginity, <clears throat> I was 15, just about to be 16. And I had, when I tell you I had zero desire, because I had boyfriends before that, that I would tell, because my mama tell you, you know, I have enough brother. So I know say sex is a real thing when it comes mm -hmm. out of boy picking them. <laughs> so, but if, if you want to be my boyfriend, the first conversation, I, I don't know how I was doing this at 14, but my 14 year old boyfriend Boy. can tell you. <laughs> and I see you going you. back in time. He can tell you, yeah, because I'm, I'm a Paris, so me, me and him still talk. And if you ask him now, I'm going to tell you, I told him at that point, yo, I ain't trying to do this sex thing. So, if you want to get a one piece and so. Do Don't that, start that Because it's not coming from me. I check for you, okay, I hang out, okay, and all that stuff, but it won't. It won't be coming from me. And it was very hard for him when we had that breakup to, to um, understand how we went from where we were, this good space where I don't care who he slept with because it wasn't going to be me, right. to I went and slept with this dude that was kind of random. Mm -hmm. And I wasn't able at that point to Just, articulate right. that, yo, lick did I run upon me. And everything I did was... Because I remember one day I was at school. I mean, my parents gang me and beat me star. I, I didn't, my father was a very timely man and he was supposed to come for me the day. Mm -hmm. And he either come for me and never see me or something. And it was my swimming coach who had to carry me home. Oh dear. And my means said, me just walk into the house, into the leaks. And I was doing absolutely nothing. I just walked into the house, into street. I mean, me and my parents fight. Okay, and a beat and a, and a slap, a oh fight. Mm -hmm. You understand? Tom I just walk into the house into lick, and that was just happening for quite some time. And I remember, you know, as a child, I'm very confident. Why may I dance and may I dip from, from, from I mean, knee, me dip on stage and whatever. So, this was all I would always straight back expressing mm -hmm. blah blah blah. I love the dance, I love the dashing out. I'm a, I, I dance like my ancestors mm -hmm. dance up in my back, mm -hmm. and so I always was the whiny, whiny one. And the, mm -hmm. you understand? And the good thing for me was that I had a dad and an aunt. My father's sister was always like me too, and she was always on festival and whatever. And so, with my father. I never got any slut shaming. It was just dance, do whatever the fuck you right, feel you like. Right, you want. Right. Don't mm -hmm. move your body and do anything you feel like. And if you want to turn over and your panty show, I just so. Mm -hmm. Yeah, pick me. Right. Be a pick me. My mother, on the other hand, was very repressed. And that was the thing my mother is like, Dr. Jekyll and Mrs. Hyde. She's repressed <laughs> as shit and a lot of OCD. Mm -hmm. And just give her one shot of white rum. And all of a sudden, the conversation is oh, straight fucking. Mm hmm. Okay, one who shot. I take off for panty and blah blah. Like <laughs> when I started to be old enough, like when I start driving, or me and my mother at the road, and I see her drunk patting her 
Pompom. Das ja. Ready, you have to be, and and like me, I chose to go on this conflict management blah blah path because this was my life, and this path, this career path, is what saved me and what enabled me to find the information to be able to look back at my mother and the stuff like that. The but if that I happen. did just do what I was getting beaten to do, which is go take my book and go study law, mm -hmm. I would still be walking up and down with that shit on my shoulders Absolutely. unable to try and figure it out always in this adversarial mode and never always. knowing why mm -hmm. blah 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 and everybody thinking that I, I was destined to come here and be a lawyer I was destined to come here and be shit I'm adversarial because I have a lot of shit in my back no but that adversarial also because you've had to practice defending yourself all the time defending yourself you see Allah something the way you touch my number really really wow for jump god I saw for the moms who are complaining about the children who are overly defensive, you know, you, you said you got to this stage here where your daddy attack, your daddy attack the talking, the cuss out, the beating, and the whatever, the accusation that you attack man, you are going with holy heap things, you are whoring, whatever, to the place now where you became ridiculously defensive. Anybody say, Feh, them, yeah, I go get dig out. Yeah. Again, a lot of moms or parents don't recognize what caused the shiv. And usually, a picnic, wait, what them say now? When you smell yourself or you or, get too big, yeah. or you are wild out, or a man. Little ear the pan your front, now you feel like say. See it now, you feel like say your tongue smuddy in the scheme of things, but not recognizing that if you have spent a lot of time defending yourself, it is one or two things going to happen. You're either going to become repressed, quiet, docile, or you fly to the reverse. You fly yeah. to the, uh, the opposite end where you get super, super defensive. So you see, whenever you talk about that or whatever, it's just creating that linkage. A lot of us still not see how them that they come together and you end up a beat picnic because now they they, they they found their voice and you're trying to beat them into submission and you're trying to beat them into submission i have a question for you go ahead this, um, defensive stuff right mm -hmm. because i can't blame a lot of the parents because you have and being a man myself and talking to other men right and knowing say so of way i call predators Mm -hmm. who in the neighborhood and from like say the little girl start turn 10 year old or whatever the case may be and right. look upon the girl them right the little girl start show up. and mm -hmm. the parents will know that and instead of them go to the, the man and make them know say look here my daughter is off limits you know and anytime you try to come near her it's going to be war between me and you instead of putting the whole thing on the little squarely girl, at this and say, making it seem as if it's 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 your fault because they start develop a body and man go on you and all them type of mm -hmm. things. You know? I think that would take a lot of the pressure and fix a lot of problems by 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 fixing the root cause mm -hmm. of all kind of things because it's only natural that a, a girl is going to have sex appeal and be beautiful and all kind of things, all kind of people are going on. Mm -hmm. But you have some man who just like to pray for the look of your people. Mm. And again, being a man myself, I know that I saw some man's paper card and tell me about them someday. Right. So I know that the parents them would have to know them type of things here too because again, parents are not stupid. They say what? what? I can, I can, <laughs> I have been that girl. So I can tell you about that. And the truth is, so when I, when I lost my virginity, I then, I just wanted to know what it was. It wasn't like a magical experience for me. I just was like, all right, well, shit. May I get knocked out for this shit? I want to know what it well. is. Let mm -hmm. me see what's so great about it. I had sex and I was like, mm, whatever. And then I didn't have sex again for a long time. Because mm. I wasn't interested. I just wanted to be on stage and dance. And then, because of the whole situation, me and my mother couldn't deal and them something there. Um, when, I, when, I, I, when I, and you know, I was always outspoken. So Immaculate never really did want me to come to Six Farm. Oh, Lord. So I left Jamaica when I was 15, went to the UK and decided that I was going to go to school in England. Because they don't tell me they don't want me a six farm out here. 
and me not try to go on other new school and whatever, blah, blah, blah. Went to the UK. Um, obviously, you know how it go. You're going to find you now. They're going to send people where they know for look after you, mm-hmm. whatever. Mother sends this man to my house, and I want to, was even going to who the man is, which makes the story worse. Um, and he has a daughter a year younger than me. Um, and uh, he come and say, coming to pick me up for um to go to the movies me and him daughter go to the movies she's a year younger than me you know mm-hmm. me and him daughter go to the movies and him he carries me back to their house and him have a shit ton of liquor and i'm like yo this is blowing my mind do you know that i want to do a bartending course <laughs> let's mix up no i'm 15. i swear to you you share innocence but just see a ton of liquor and say yo mega mix up some shit okay and the man is like, yeah, pick, pick, pick them up. Pick a couple, that's mix right. Them up. Mix that shit up. Let's see if you have any skills, right? And I'm just mixing shit, colors upon colors, and, right? And then he started to act drunk. Little girl got in our bed, started to act drunk, and he's coming to me to dance with me. But I'm noticing that the dance is getting a little too, too intimate. Touchy, t- mm-hmm. touchy, to not rub me down, you know. Right. But, but the, coming the space in too is close. closing in. Right. The space is closing in. And he's bending down now, almost trying to like kiss me. And just a lot of, a lot of weird shit, right? And again, the ancestors are with me. I don't know why I never get a rape. I honestly don't know. Because at that point now, it's so funny. The, just the same way I said to you. When men do me anything and I go to my mother, the fighter in her goes away. When men make certain advances to me, the fighter in me goes away and I fall up. I don't know why. I don't know if it's because that, that's, that's what I see her do mm-hmm. or what. But the Daniel now that would normally be out. Because mm-hmm. when me a little girl and I fight with my brother friend, them in a brother now. But no one fight me. And me, no. mm-hmm. I mean, I take everything, me, every, t- every force in me is coming at you. But once it becomes sexual, and you step, you pull in. Um, right. Right? And tears is flowing down my face. I don't know who was walking with me that night. And I just said to the man, just please send me home. Just please, like me, I beg now, please don't rape me. Mm-hmm. You understand? And him carried me near to my yard. And I was crying and saying, you know what's the worst part about this situation? There's somebody who my parents trust. And the people who they don't trust, who genuinely love me, mm-hmm. who would never do this to me, mm-hmm. are the people that they try to keep me away from. from. Yes, sir. And him, they still try to make the advance. I'm a chuck out of the vehicle and run. And it's my first week or two in the UK, so I don't know where the fuck I'm running to. Right. I'm a run, busting at the house, right into the arms of my auntie. I did fall up and the ground and start ball. And um, because this person was close to my family, again, it was my birthday. It was my 16th birthday. I always had shitty birthday since then and that's something to look at yeah that's and, coming and from i know somewhere. why i know <laughs> okay, why okay right. my mm-hmm. mother took up the phone and called me and said oh my come to england for look man and the did, 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 did. so whatever the man i never t- call him and tell him nothing you know but just gonna fall up in my auntie my auntie mm-hmm. run out no because my auntie are the worry no yeah. my auntie run out no with machete and everything to fuck up someone straight you understand and i just said to her auntie sharon just chill because me don't want it be a big deal and come and know if, if my father know that enough people dead one time you understand mm-hmm. and out the blue, I'm having my 16th birthday and my mother calling me to tell me I need to come home and the who are in this and the who are in that and the blah, 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 blah. And my sister is telling me I need to be carried to the red light district because that's where I belong. Don't bother go to college. <sighs> just go wow. to the red light district and stand up because you just in, you intend to be a whore, right? You'll never be anything else, right? Um, and remember this absence of information because my mother hadn't asked me yet what happened mm-hmm, mm-hmm. nor did she know and it's my 16th birthday and everybody give it to me on the phone and it's my father come now blazing on the phone and i'm crying and i don't know again who what? was who was with us because my father in his temper is a man stuck in his temper and my father said to me what i'm saying i said daddy that's not how it go and in in a second him switch and him asked me what happened and i was able to tell him and he was the only person who apologized. My mother held her in the same way. My sister to this day hasn't apologized. And my mother and that man are still friends today. She still has not defended me. That story has floated around my family about 10, 15 million different ways how I went and looked the man. Mm-hmm. It was when I was 
in my 20s, well into my 20s, that I saw his daughter again. And incidentally, she's gay. So I want to show you how the action of the parents sometimes, not Come. to say she wouldn't have been gay mm -hmm. otherwise, right? Mm -hmm. But she's seen him, um, she's been in the house when him raped her stepmother. She's had him look her friends in her age group and whatever. And so with that situation, it's like, why would you want a man? A man. Mm -hmm. You understand? Yeah. And when, when she told me she was gay, I was just like, yo, I fully... Totally I get, comprehend I get with that. a father like that. You understand what I said to you? Mm -hmm. um, and it was her. It was me and her sitting down and reasoning. And she saying to me, this is the only validation I ever got out of the situation, apart from the fact that my father rides the machines. It, the only validation I got out of the situation was her saying to me, I know, I heard. I heard and I know. And I know that something happened and I know the story you are telling is a true story. Mm -hmm. And I know it must be true also because he looked my friend then. Because he raped my stepmother in the house and I was there. Da, 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 da. That's the only validation I've ever gotten from that situation. And the truth be told, when, when everything was happening up to maybe five years ago, I would still be on the top of my voice cussing out my mother for that shit. How do, how do you still be friends with this person? Right. Who do you need this? Right. The truth is, I don't, I don't know that she knows any better how to respond. I don't really know huh. either if, if she also was in a situation now where she take that thing into herself. Look, based on how she did with me over the years, it's always That's, my fault. Right, so, so that is how and she when I went back and, and did the, the research now with my cousins and asked my cousins, why is she like this? Mm -hmm. And what was her situation? And every cousin can give you a different piece of the puzzle. Mm -hmm. This man did do that. That one I did do this. That one I did do this. Blah, 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 blah. Everybody have a different story and a different hush, hush. And right. Whatever. Right. That's when you're able to piece together the fact that, well, fuck. She, she done went been through, through some hell. shit. And exactly. she had no mother to run to. Nobody no father to, to run to. to right. Nobody to talk to. And anybody who she would have probably been able to go to may have also, also did the same thing to her. Well, right. well you expect Just minimize it. Like that. Exactly. Minimize it. Or make it her fault. I was she... Her thing is when you deny the picnic them reality, when you make it their fault, it didn't happen, or if it actually happened really and truly, it is your fault. You cannot look this way and not expect men to advance, um, you know, towards you in a particular way. So it's just no that and also sometimes too it's 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 generated from a place of fear. I don't know if I talk about this, what is going to happen. I don't know if I open this door, if Daniel is not going to ask me the question about my past that, I'm that not I can, to talk not, about. not prepared to do. I don't know if this exposes me. I don't know if this exposes her other siblings because it's recently I find out, like, I always talk about my mother and my sister's relationship or my mother and my brother's relationship. It's recently in visiting one of my cousins that my cousin says to me, do you know why your mother and your sister are like that? Or do you know why your mother and your brother are like that? Or do you know why she treats them differently from mm. you? And then a whole wave of information come to Just me that I did, did not, not see coming from mm -hmm. nowhere in all my research. And so it's, it's with that now that I start to say, well, shit, maybe she told me that story. She would have exposed some all shit on my brother, people, right. some shit on my sister, some it shit on my sister's up. father, blah, 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 it blah, blah. It's link up. You see, but the thing is this, right? I mean, just to go back to what it is that you're saying, a lot of us are ill-equipped to have that conversation with our daughters, especially, you see, as, you see the body start to change? Most of we don't know what to do. And based on what it is that Daniel is saying, a lot of us, you know what I've come to realize since I started doing this kind of work, a whole heap of rape take place in a, mm -hmm. a whole heap of incest take place, a whole heap of nastiness take place in a, some family there, and it hush up. Yep. It, it happened and you just, we just forget about it, we don't talk about it again after that. If you never did pregnant as a result, then we just keep it quiet. Worse if it happened in the family, People are implicated in the family. We're certainly not going to say anything about it, yeah? And so years and years of covering up, this is what it is that you get. And in a mom's mind, this is the best way to protect for some of the mothers. Let me quickly um, clarify. For some of the moms who are still in trauma mode, who never do nothing about the trauma, what them experience and so on, right? This is their best way of protecting the child. So you don't sit and have a conversation and say to your daughter, boy, baby, hear this now. Your body start to change. These are the things that's going to start to happen. Them not have them conversation, you know, they've never seen that behavior. So which part them will get them knowledge there from? 
You follow what I mean? So your thing is whatever your mother did tell you, you model the behavior that you have seen most consistently. So whatever your mother did tell you, whatever experiences you had with whoever you, you grew up with, your mother, your auntie, your, your cousin, them, your whatever, right? That is what you are going to, that is, that is how you're going to handle the situation in front of you. And it is always some way, somehow the girl fault. So you do the slut shaming in a way, in a means to keep her in line, keep her in line, keep her in line. So you tell her this now, you're going to make sure that she don't mix up with boy. Or if it's not the slut shaming, the thump down and the kick up and the box up. So them understand that people are got dead and it's not the boy son or the, the buckless man down the road. And you may have got killed. Go lay yourself, kill this monster the boy. Pass and smile with him one time and my thump thump you. But that don't piss up. No, it doesn't. it doesn't. But what I'm saying is that is the only way that they know how to approach it. Yes, I gave a talk at a school about, um, I was talking to the young girls about sex. Just trying to ascertain from them what they know about sex and whatever. And all of them in the room, everyone without fail, not one parent gave them information. Let me just say that part there. Them never get no information. My mother did say What them get a, well, good for you, honey. So, so God Almighty, treat a girl say her mother got sharpen the last and make her know, say, listen, people with dead and you are got dead. And next one, tell her, said, because man, I go want it because your titty stiff right about now. But then breathe you six times, that she won't forget about you. That was her conversation about sex. <clears throat> Period, full stop. And so if you have a generation of moms who, who are repressed, who still suffering from trauma, then this is the, that's the only conversation that you can expect to have. It can't, it can't go no further. And so what you have is a repeat of the cycle. Um, young women growing up, behaving in a particular way and not necessarily, some of them are able to connect the dots. Boy, is my mother why? Like how you talk about it. At the pressure where you did get, why you decide, say, boy, all right, you're going to become sexually active. But had it not been for this line of work, you trying to find out, okay, why am I this adversarial? And that taking you down a particular road, you would not have, you would not have been able to, assess the situation i'd have been successful as she exactly but still a whole heap of pain and that is what's going on and that is the hypocrisy that i see with this day because very few most of us are going to go buy flowers we're going to buy we call it there chocolate, chocolate we're going to buy outfit we're going to buy bossy bag and so forth and we are hurting we have questions there are things we want to find out you know what I mean? But we dare not go to mama. And I remember a client came to me and she said, my mother never tell me nothing about my father. So fight. We said, the man wicked him, breed her and him left her. Nothing else. And she says, every time she asks about it, all her mom has to say is something negative. And so she said, I grew up thinking that men are dogs. The whole of them are junker. Them just have got breed you and left you. And because of that, attracted a string of a junker. A string of junker. So now she has three children for three different men. And That's stopping really now. Funny. And finally starting to realize that Jesus Christ, this is where it's coming from. Generational you, and that's what I'm saying. Very few of us get to this space now where we can actually say, this thing now, a young man was telling me how his mother got beat him in at the school. He might get trouble, carry him now down a school as a tear down in pants and beat him in front of the, what do you call it now, in front of the, 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 the farm room. The assembly. Like oh. in front of the farm room and the embarrassment that he felt as a result of that and who he became in order to defend himself because for walk back in a school, the next day, and pick me a laugh, you to scorn who you become. Extremists. Who, who you become because of X amount of fight that, you know. Because anybody said anything to him, I talked up because that's the only way that he could defend himself. And I sit and I look at it now, afterwards, just coming to a place where I realize that I have always had a hairpin trigger, developed a, what we refer to as bad attitude. People referring to him as angry. All the time getting that on his, on, on his what you call it, appraisal. This whole idea that he's explosive and not being able to, to pinpoint, connect the dots. He just thinking, boy, him is a hothead. Period, full stop. So I, I feel mm -hmm. as though this conversation, this is, is a necessary part of the healing. Because something where you say is absolutely pertinent. You would have been successful. Successful as shit. But 
riddled. I'd probably be a QC. And but riddled. Riddled with no me. nonsense. Don't forget the no nonsense part. And but you know the riddled. Thing, you know it was very. I don't know where I got this stuff from early. You know, maybe it's because I was surrounded by men. Mm -hmm. But from early, I had recognized that I want to be a mother. And I want to be a wife, mm -hmm. but I don't want to be the kind of mother and wife that I see my mother being. Mm -hmm. And I also I know the thing that law makes me into. I don't want to be the kind of mother and wife that can't put down the fight because I'm very passionate still. about it, mm -hmm. right? Um, absent of my mother and her stuff, I'm very passionate, and I'm very passionate about people's causes. And I don't want to be the mother who comes home and can't put down the fight and other people's shit. Mm -hmm. You understand? Okay, and don't so the family. when when I was in university, I very quickly started to assess, well, what do I want to be? Hmm, I like to write, so it has to be a writing thing. I like to talk, it has to be a talking thing. Um, and I started to assess those things and changed my whole view. That's when I decided that I wanted to, I think I wanted to do my PhD. And that's mm -hmm. why my PhD is important to me. I want to do my PhD because I want to be a lecturer. Mm -hmm. A lecturer sets their hours when they're going to lecture. Yeah, they write. Mm -hmm. They mark papers. Mm -hmm. They can go home in the middle of the day. They can pick up them picnic from school. They ain't fighting with nobody except maybe the normal work, bad mm -hmm. mind, blah, blah, rubbish. Um, Maybe if I'm a university lecturer in whatever field, mm -hmm. I would have reached the level where I still mean something to my mother because it's not QC, but it's PhD. Okay, okay. You understand? So, I mean, so my sister a doctor no, and so my brother. On. So what I'm hearing as well then, okay, a part of you validating yourself in the eyes of your mom is you being accomplished in a particular way. So I have to be the best at, the at thing whatever that I it is that you're doing. Okay. Yeah. Right. So okay, I'm not going to do this QC thing, but. I go come to something. I remember telling my mother that one day. I dance on tabletop. I go come to something. Come, I go show you. Cause like when my sister says shit, like yes. I work in a red light district. I'm like, bitch, watch <laughs> how me I go better than you, a bumbo. <laughs> watch whether I not me I dance on table. You know my side. Me I fuck hundred man. People watch how me I go better than you. Before it. me go in my grave, me I go have my PhD and me I go larger than you. Mm -hmm. And so my PhD, no matter Became. what setbacks, have always been the focus for me. But alternate to that was that if i have this fucking phd shit then i don't have to do the fight and the whatever mm -hmm. and i can be there for my kids you're and a I shot can, caller yeah you're your own box yeah all right i mean can't come on my fuck my husband and me glad the day and, and chill no yeah mm -hmm. so my think said that's something that we want to do so it's like them not even know and for me yes there was a good spin to it where i was just like yeah all right fuck me and my go working at the red light district bitch <laughs> but after me done put on the night work there, me I gotta be someone. You have things to Don't get it me. twisted. <laughs> I, if me have to fuck thousand man, when you done me have house and land and care and things behind my name. So don't worry yourself. Just like Pastor Dunbar said, she was dance all queen and them something there. But see her the PhD now. And so in my mind, it was always. You don't worry about which part me I go start. And if, not, if I disown, I disown me today for my 16th birthday for me go work in a red light district, bitch, me I go do that and me I go take out some picture. And me I go be the artist, go, go out, the Cardi B style. And that's and right. when I'm done, <laughs> my things still I go up better than yours. <laughs> that's oh. where I took it. it was so, in a lot of ways, it was empowering. a motivation. It was empowering. Yeah. It was it inspiration. Was my, and, and remember now, from the little she tell me, say, you don't cute, but man, I go want to fuck you. So I was like, well, Let's this man, I want to fuck me thing look Shit. like... Straight. It look like he carry me somewhere. All right. That's so, all. <laughs> as long as I end up where I want to be... It looks like a, a relevant avenue that I need to think about. You're going about. to go. You're going to go. Don't get it twisted. I thought about it. No, oh it's goodness. just that life would have presented me with a father that meant me not for ever after do that. There was a, a balance. There was a, a counterbalance. A yes. Mm. There yes. was a counterbalance. But you see, for you, for you, there was some grounding, as you rightly just said. For a lot of other people, they are still suffering in silence. And then there is the whole idea that I still have to deal with mama in a particular way in spite of. So it's almost as though every day I deny my reality. I deny my experience. I deny how it made me feel because you dare not go talk bad about your mother. You dare not go... Yeah. Up, up, I face that in my family. You dare not talk about... Listen to me. I face that on your show. Exactly. People waiting in the car. Yeah, 
People call and, and tell you that? Too? Yeah, it's like you're telling because remember, no, you know, your your parent in their eyes is always the best parent. Absolutely. Or they're the professional or the whatever. So them, they cl kill them, they them know what is going on in your household. No, not only that, you reach somewhere in a life now. So clearly you had good parenting. Exactly. And, and so your Somebody... parents would have been absent of any flaws. Absolutely. Right? Absolutely. I've had that and I still have it like with like my, this. This is something my sister hates. What? Like coming out and talking our shit. Oh, I'm sure if my sister sees yeah, this, she's gonna the die. Family. I know. She's gonna die. Fall up and, and die. And so, more, a lot of people in the world do not know that my sister is my sister because mm -hmm. next thing you know, I would have exposed her story and why she is the way that she is. Right, right, right. right. Don't do it. <laughs> Don't do it. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> um, but the the truth is that it it took it took so much for me to get here. Mm -hmm. Also, because sometimes sometimes we're looking for the validation and we're trying to go to our mothers. My mother was not about that life. Mm. My mother's a sweep shit under the rug kind of mother. Absolutely. And so, so you're you couldn't not get getting any questions answers from answered, her. Right. And so when I said these a lot of work, yes, a lot of people don't have the, the stuff that I had, but a lot of what I did was I took that work like life. So till when me go a psychologist and say I need to talk to you about my mother, the girl say, listen, I don't, there's nothing I can do for you. you know? You've done the work you've already. You've done the stuff. So walk me down the process for the woman who finds herself in, in, in that very same situation. N prior to you getting to this place, what was that process like? I had to go to everybody that was not my mother that I thought would tell me the truth. Mm -hmm. So what was the truth you were trying to ascertain? Why she stay so? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so in the truth, I didn't expect her asking my mother shit i don't expect her to come and say to me well at this point in my life this happened and da, 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 da. i don't expect her to have the method that i have because i learned that method out of a goddamn book right you understand but i wanted to who who the fuck are you can you tell me a story mm -hmm. if i know your story now i can you say, can oh, connect up some dots da, 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 right. Da, da. right you ain't trying to tell me shit and so i would go to my cousins who were fear roadie them and are parry them and the blah 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 and as I grew up too, I tried to foster a really good relationship with my father where while we've had hiccups, I can say to my father, when Sansa did happen, mm -hmm. what was, how what did was you that? see that story? Right. What happened then? Like when you didn't meet her, mm -hmm. how she did stay? Like the other day I asked my husband, do you know how your parents met? He don't know that shit. I know how my parents met. Mm -hmm. I heard her say it in a little one-off way. Mm -hmm. And then I heard my father tell me how they got together and stuff like that. And then I would say, I'd go and, you know, one of my cousins are here just off, so I'll go and I'll sit and do my hair. And they'll be ask. talking about how people met. And I'll say to her, how far are you, Valerie? Mm -hmm. How that go? And she will tell me what she saw. Mm -hmm. How the, you understand? And then a next cousin on the father side or the mother side, because every you know the, all the cousins them go. No, and next right. one and who did that come up? Because them was ten. Them have a different view of the story. Mm -hmm. In the kind to him, did always carry a supermarket. And the next one I got say him did. It was a at man. Him be a beer at car. And mm -hmm. your mother did love the da, 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 da. And then and next one I got say. Well, the truth is your mother did that with your sister father. Why? And when your mother did that with your sister father, your sister father that year. Headless born, cause my sister father is like, yeah, yes. <laughs> <laughs> That's my dad. I love him. Oh, them man is sharp like razor. <laughs> One you time, me? yes. <laughs> them man just walk you out of your panty just like One that. One time, and just like me, he, he love a ghetto girl. <laughs> Me and him have that in a family. No, what? Yes. My Jesus. Oh my God. All right. And so, so, so even that. I me love a ghetto man. Everybody know that. Mm -hmm. But Jesus. my sister father loved ghetto Help girls. Mm -hmm. And I remember saying to myself at one point, what the hell is he doing with her? Why am I doing my mother? Mm -hmm. I'm like gold teeth and so. <laughs> Why? Like, legit. Like him like gold a teeth. true, true, true to farm ghetto girl. Jesus. And Rip Erin and all it, these it, things. And, and so it is in analyzing that. What is he like about these women? And mm -hmm. how is he with her? Because it wasn't any veneration why I was with her. Right. And it was me you now looking and investigating. Oh, when she's true to herself. That is when it. She's, she's under a that white girl. Term, she's a, the, she's mama like, is a goddamn get a girl attached. She, she, all this polish is just some shit she learned and put on very well. Mm -hmm. But in truth, in her, it's, it's like me when people see me at work. Yes. 
and then them see you like this and them wonder no, what the hell. you see like this, like you see me out of road, like so. All right, so you know last time I come here, I come out one dirty day and people go rile up about it. Right. But when you see my husband at work, he just a quiet, unassuming. Yes. Man. And then you see so. me out of road, and you're like, okay, then what happened Who here? Is that? <laughs> and that's my mother. Mm -hmm. that, you understand? So like it, it, those little things that I learned about her was always, and I always said. Like how I get the story from my father now, I'm going to try and go to him. When she did left you yeah, that day, then what did happen? Right. Because I mean, now I mean know her. So mm -hmm. I know mean, say it wasn't just, oh, he was giving me bun. Mm -hmm. Blah, blah, blah. My mother, and some of that lives in me, I know she's psyched up that shit. And then one day in the middle of the, our, our shit, did probably I'll pack. One day in the middle of the night, when mm -hmm. he just never come home on time, she just jump up and say, well, fuck, fuck this. this. <laughs> Out. Fuck that, I'm done, nigga. Right. And she just take up her shit and cook. Cause when I talk to my father, that's what my father say, yo, one day she just come and say, yo, she now I'm moving truck. <laughs> and he's like, what the fuck? It's happening. <laughs> you understand? That's right. a barn yet, you know? Mm hmm So I always said I was gonna go and sit and talk to him and say, that day when you come home and don't see nothing. No picnic, no, no sh sh mm -hmm. nothing. What, what did you think? What happened? Did you call her? Da, 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 mm -hmm. da. Because if I got to her, she ain't gonna tell me that shit. And so when I said to you, it is work, it is work because I have to keep on going to people, cross referencing the story, pieces of information. So even with my brother and my mother and my sister, and these things where I have her up and say, Oh, my brother is your favorite, or Oh, this sister is your da da da. Mm -hmm. It's like last year, one of my cousins said to me, You know why your mother deal with your brother like that or mm -hmm. you know why your mother deal with your sister like that and that is how i get a piece of information and from that story i can go to another cousin and a da 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 um, and I wasn't, I was ill prepared for the information I was running up into. Mm. And so in the beginning, I was still just angry, like comparatively. So this shit happened to me. This shit happened to you. Why didn't you ever tell me right. this was your story? Why didn't you hide me? And, and I remember one of the occasions where my mother, where someone tried to mediate between me and my mother, one of the things I was Talking to her at a normal level, because despite anything, I respect my mother, my lover, and I um, fear her, right? Mm -hmm. So while I'm talking to her, I'm still full of manners because that bitch will not leave the out. fuck out. One okay? time. No matter mm -hmm. how me that, that she, she would chop off my head. I'm mean, know that. So I'm in a normal tone, and she said something that triggered me. I don't remember what it was. And it was like demons. Spring jumping up. out of my chest. I was on the top of my voice. I was ready to fight. In that moment, I did not see her as my mother knowing us. I'm yes, ready to yeah. fight. Come, mm -hmm. take a step. If you feel your blood clap, but Pick up a yeah, you're going to fight. Mouth. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. So now it's like me, a town wife, right. instead of mom, mom and, and daughter. daughter. Right. And in that space, I'm yelling at her and saying to her, how could you? How could you? Why would you live this life? And know that you live this life and turn around and, and make it too. so that I have to live back this life. Why wouldn't you shelter me? Mm -hmm. You sheltered everybody else. Why wouldn't you shelter me? And it's in that space where she comes in the small voice. Now, in these situations, one everybody happens, one high and one, one higher, take the dynamic. She takes shift. a small voice and right. she says to me, "Like you're so much like me, though. I thought you'd be okay." Cause in the grand scheme of things, she's okay. Mm -hmm. eh? She she was successful. She had three decent kids. Blah blah blah. blah. Right. She made it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So you're so strong though, and you're so this, and you're so that, and you're so much like me. I didn't think so I had to I protect you it. the way that mm -hmm. I had to protect them because I'm okay, and you're so much like me. So I knew you'd be okay too. I was just like, well, fuck. <laughs> Look at that shit. <laughs> No. <laughs> ah, wow. I listening. I listening and I thinking to myself, oh my God. A lot of women or a lot of sons haven't gotten to that space. 
haven't gotten to the space that they can have. You see that, that, that explosion that we have, I tell people all the time, you know, the coaching process, it is, it, is, it is the thing I am looking for because it's the turning point. It is, is how me you know, say, finally, you know, we put on the pleasantries and we say, fuck all of the stupidness we're about to get, shit's about to get real. You know what I mean? And it is usually when it is that the most truth, the thing where the swallow down in your belly a long, long time, finally get an opportunity to, to just drop on the table. I am, I sit here and I say over and over, even as, a, as part of the reason why I felt it was necessary to have this conversation that there are so many of us walking around with all of this pain, all of this pain, and not really certain where to put it. So we'll give it to our partners. And thank you, or we'll put it on. We'll the pick children. them. We'll put it on. Just give it to the partners. Jesus, that is an entire show. And put it on the children. I am, I am curious, what, um, what would you say to somebody who recognize it's, it, you know, and, and there are different levels to it. At, at one point it's buried. Another point, now it starts to bring something, trigger it or whatever it is, and you find that something starts to happen. What would you say to the person who is, it, it's surfacing? You want to talk about it now. Right. <clears throat> right. Write it down. Because um, I think what was important for me was getting it out. And let me tell you, let me qualify. So... In that conversation with my mother, that was not the turning point was because my mom tell you to my mother, my son and feel later. Mm -hmm. So in that moment, she was small, honest, and true. Mm -hmm. Right? She cried and she told me sorry. Mm. And I know that she meant it in that moment. Mm. When I come out of the room now and she realized that, well, faces hit her. Brother, sister, mm -hmm. sister, blah, blah, blah. How the fuck is she gonna tell him that she just had to apologize to, to me? To who them have off in a particular yeah, light? Yeah, the dirty the red light district. Yellow, yellow love. What and so and so. And so and you just mm -hmm. even so small up yourself to that. Right. How, how are you gonna tell them? And how are you gonna tell them why you apologize? Mm. How are you gonna do that? And so she didn't. And so that's the reason why me and my brother and my sister can't agree. Because none of us don't understand each other's story. All of the sudden, them don't. And everybody have off everybody. Right. right. I'm the only one who understands that <laughs> we don't understand each other's story and that's why the fuck we can't get along we right. love each other you know, mm -hmm. fiercely right. like right i know me can't stand my sister but any if you do our something me leave you people up. dead you understand a message to you right and so she did a lot of sweeping under the rug and so we had to have more than one of those conversations until it got to the point where i realized that mm, the master manipulator in her is never going to make this conversation do for me what it, i needed to do mm -hmm. but what it did for me was get some of the shit up off of my chest right. all the shit that i would have been walking around with mm -hmm. other than that no i'm putting on my kids it helped me i, I don't think my sister has had that moment to do when my sister mad with my mother about something she just take with herself it's a thing we all do but mm -hmm. she does it more than me she just take with herself and then malice for a good while and then they come back and they never talk about it there's never any that explosion right she, especially to all oh, she's secretive and so, mm -hmm. and no one people out the road know her shit. She's a person I would say, write that shit down. Mm -hmm. Write her a letter. Nobody gives a fuck about the spelling and the semicolon and the just whatever. Write just write, write it, it down and get it out. Mm -hmm. Because if, if, I, if none of that was clear to me before, it was clear to me when I became pregnant and I did not know I was having a boy pick me. You see, when I'm pregnant and I, that first five months, and I was like, oh, fuck. Karma gonna give me a fucking daughter. <laughs> That's what's going to happen now, Jesus. And I, I, I'm not ready, Father. I'm not ready, Jesus. I'm not. I don't ready. I don't oh, ready. God. Karma <laughs> gonna fuck me up <laughs> one time and give me a daughter. And my mother used to wish that shit on me. Now don't worry yourself. You're gonna get one like you, <laughs> just like you. Don't worry yourself. Mm. You're so sick, right? And and so in that moment, like before, when I went and they tell me, say, a boy, I'm like, me, me full of tears. I'm like, oh, Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> because me don't know what me are going to do yes or no. If I know, so. But it was clear to me at that point that, well, Daniel, you are on this mothering thing. You do want to be a mom. You don't know what the fuck you're getting in if you start getting your shit together now. Mm -hmm. What are you, you going to do? Right. And that is what made me like start to think back on stuff. And I went to more people, even though I thought I had done some of the work. Because this work is an unending work, you know. I'm telling Straight. you that, brother. Mm -hmm. The minute you think, say, you do I got it out. now, some new shit drops Drop. Up, drop. Mm -hmm. Right? Um, and so that was what made me act 
actively start to say, well, yes, I would like to understand, but apart from liking to understand, I'd like to put some of it down mm-hmm. because a general, a, a generational curse, I shall not break perpetuate. It. You're going to break it. You understand? Mm-hmm. I am not mm-hmm. perpetuating this shit. I'm not going to have a daughter and put this shit on her. Right. My daughter and I got ears say she don't beautiful and she will take no white man answer. Like <laughs> I am the tag of broke up. Right mash now. up. Right there. So. Mm-hmm. Right. And in order <clears> for me to do that, need to put down some of them shit here so if if it means that by putting down some of the shit i have to walk and talk it to everyone which is what when i went to the therapist girl that's what she said to me you need to go and help Just, people mm-hmm. go talk to people tell your story or something and find that in helping other people who go through that thing you get validation from them because you're not gonna get it from your mother mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and so that's when i began to talk about it but also to do more work in a bid to find a way to put some of it down because any if if god should ever make me have a daughter not that i want any more children jesus just hear that part (laughs) right i am not about to create a mini me she can be mini me in lots of other ways but not in the dysfunction but we're not we're not going to carry the dysfunction i mean i'm gonna be friend Mm. that was um that was something that i was determined it was one of those things that i didn't feel that i i could do with my own mom um this just talking to her openly about things because i felt as though it was going to come back to haunt me i would be able to sit and have the conversation but some way somehow yeah man in our argument and so forth you got it here ray 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 and that happened maybe enough times for me to to you know decide okay fine I, i there are certain things that i can say and certain things that i can't but with my own daughter i made a concerted effort to facilitate conversation with her. I always wanted to know, and I wanted her to know that anything at all, you can come to your mother, your mother, your first point of reference, come talk to me about anything at any time. That was something that I was, it, 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 it meant so much to me. So I fostered that relationship where um, she understands that, listen to me, you can come tell me anything, but don't, don't ever forget to me, I still your mother. You follow what I mean? So there is, we're still doing the respecting, but understand that we have an open line of communication. That was a weird part for <clears> me, you know, because my mother was that for me in many ways. I mm-hmm. could go and tell my mother different stuff. things. As soon as it became about men, maybe more sex than man, because mm-hmm. I could tell her if I have a, like a boyfriend that she know don't mean nothing. Right. Um, but the minute that it became about uh, sex when I was younger. Mm-hmm. And then when I was older, about her, mm. it was just like, bitch, nope. Now I'm going to no, further. No, I'm telling That's you. That's it. I'm watching the TV, the news, the news. Is, now I'm going to further. I have that conversation with you. I'm busy. That's it. You see, for me, I, I want, what I want us to understand as moms, right? There, are, there is a responsibility that goes beyond breastfeeding, that goes beyond making sure that the child is kept that goes beyond just keeping them clothed and sending them to the right schools and all of this. There is a responsibility, an emotional responsibility that a lot of us have to understand. You see what you talk about when you recognize that I want to be a mom. There are certain things that I'm gonna have to fix about myself. It is something that a lot of us don't look at and most of us end up, mom becomes something that is fashionable especially nowadays it's so in vogue oh like my god women. you have a little baby bump yes you understand what i mean and everybody's like oh my god she's now pregnant word. but we forget what the work that we have to put in in order to fix our dysfunction because as you know i started off the show by saying a lot of the dysfunction that people that people have that people wrestling with come from and i'm not saying all but a lot of it come from their relationship with their parents relationship with their mothers the mother wound is something that a lot of us take through our lives and impact so many different aspects of it and so i'm imploring you know on this day that whilst we are giving flowers and making sure that mommy feel good and we're giving the handbag and so on that we start you know we start to make some inroads in terms of healing the pain because as you rightly said you have to break the cycle and it is a cycle that if you don't make a concerted effort to say stop, will continue. This whole idea of we're burying it and we're putting it underneath the rug. Talk about the things that happen that still pain you. 
And if we are truthful, there are some things that mommy said when you was five, that you, when you was seven, that you was ten. When you're that, thirty. That a stab, when you're thirty, that a stab, stab you up. Stab, stab you up. And, but because the respect, and we feel that the respect means that we, there are certain places that we cannot take the conversation. You follow what I mean? And that is the place that you need to take the conversation, not just for your healing, but also for your mother own too. Because sometimes it is in the confrontation that mommy gets to say what it is that she said to you. I thought, you're like me, I thought you were strong enough. To have her self articulate that and to see, to sit in it, to own some of the things and what she did do, some of the things and what she did sweep underneath the rug and sun. And it's not in a bid to castigate, but in a bid to heal. And there's so much of this nation that need to heal. And as moms, I look at our roles as huge in terms of the development of any nation. And we big up the mother them every day, all the time. But I want us to start having those deeper conversations. Yeah? In order to get at the root cause, to fix and stop the cycle, to break the cycle, the unhealthy stuff that we continue to per um, perpetuate as it you know, pertains to body image, as it pertains to how it is that we look at ourselves, our relationship with others and so on. I want us to pay closer attention to that, yeah? And with that said, I would like to thank Mrs. Stewart for speaking ever so real. You know what I mean? Hands down. <laughs> word, word without end. Where people can find, you know, if them want them little conflict for sat out and some people know say our thing legit, she real, she gonna give it to an racha, <laughs> which is me, I'm about that life. I don't believe that, you know, you have to be an academic and then certainly there's a certain way that you have to, um, you know, conduct yourself. I want to know if I understand a woman certified from A to Bullfoot is one of the most educated women me ever meet. I mean, I'm not telling her lie. I want to see if I can find her and I'm lying me and telling her thing up large and in charge. But in the see, in all of that, she's still able to keep it real. Where people find you? Well, I'm easily accessible on Facebook. I, I don't. I'm going to try to get into social media. I yes, really... please. Yes, please. So, which half of Facebook then can you find you? Look for Daniel Stewart. Daniel um, Stewart. And mm -hmm. I have a page specifically about the mothers and daughters stuff, which is Mothers and Daughters J A. Tell about the Lord again. Mothers and Daughters J A. -A. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, um, at Mothers and Daughters J A. That's for Facebook. Um, you know, I think I linked those things up some time ago, but I really don't remember. But the point is, I'm really, really easily accessible on Facebook. Um, and if you just send me a message, I will respond. So it's Daniel Stewart. Spell the Daniel for me now, please. D-A-N-I-E-L-L-E. -L -L -E. Okay. Stewart. Yeah. And mothers. Mothers and daughters, J. Mothers and daughters, J. With that, um, I am going to thank you for watching, ask that you subscribe, please and thank you, share, blessings, take care.